Well, good morning. I'm Gene Bandman. I'm the CEO of DriveScale. Um, I think Ethan is the only one that's a repeat. Uh, so apologies, Ethan. Uh, I have a couple of slides you saw two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll need a refresher. <laughs> Uh, so, as Tom said, you know, we're, we're about making agile infrastructure for data intensive computing. Uh, there's a lot of other computing out there that's not data intensive. Uh, we don't have a lot to say about that kind. Uh, and, uh, but for uh, companies and uh, institutions and uh, web-based uh, applications, data intensity is really where the, where the game is, and that's, that's where we're focused. Um, let me go back one here. Um, so uh, our purpose is to radically transform the modern data center for these large uh, data intensive applications. Uh, we watched what was going on in cloud scale computing. Uh, their need to analyze in incredibly large data sets uh, uh, was solved with a, the invention of scale out computing or distributed computing where you divide the data set up into thousands or tens of thousands of little pieces that you put on uh, servers and then you run uh, analysis against that data set in parallel. Um, they got a ton of benefit out of this kind of uh, scale out distributed computing um, uh, data analytics. Uh, and so people started thinking about how they could do that in uh, smaller scale enterprise uh, data sets. Uh, and uh, the translation from these hyperscale data centers into the enterprise was just to use commodity servers with uh, direct attached storage and buy them by the hundreds. Uh, and that really worked. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a successful approach, uh, but there is quite a bit of inefficiency in that uh, and a lot of constraints to that. And it actually slowed down the uh, deployment of this kind of computing because it, it actually was pretty hard. Uh, and so uh, our founders, Tom and Satya, saw a way of using disaggregation and composability to make this uh, the, the kind of uh, computing that the big uh, hyperscale guys were using uh, more accessible and easier and more efficient uh, at the enterprise scale. Uh, so we blew up these DAS data centers and are replacing them now uh, with composable infrastructure where we construct the compute platform uh, for the application out of commodity components. Uh, this is starting to get attention. Uh, Satya dreamed this up in uh, 2012, founded the company in 2013. Uh, we called it Software Composable Infrastructure. Uh, just this year, Gartner uh, uh, put composable infrastructure on their hype cycle, actually on three different hype cycles. Um, and uh, so we're, we're pretty happy about that. This is, uh, this is wind at our back. Uh, we dropped the software composable infrastructure. Now we're composable infrastructure. We want to be compatible with the, uh, with the industry term. Uh, Gardner's definition of composable infrastructure is like, almost exactly off of our data sheet. We were pretty excited when, when we saw them uh, announce the, their definition of composable infrastructure. So we're the, one of the founding companies in the composable infrastructure space. Uh, we've been at this since uh, 2013. Um, we, I think, uh, to support the uh, hypiness of composable infrastructure, Gartner was looking around for companies that exemplified it, and they named us one of their uh, uh, cool vendors of 2018 uh, for cloud infrastructure, uh, because we're one of the few companies that actually implements this composable infrastructure idea. Uh, IDC jumped on. Uh, in fact, they were right there uh, along with Gartner. I think they actually recognized this composable uh, type of idea uh, earlier than Gartner did. Uh, and being the numbers guys, uh, they have um, projected uh, the size of this market. Uh, this is all, all things composable, so hardware, software, uh, and in, in the data center. But you know, they, it's going to be a sizable uh, uh, business over the next few years. Uh, and we're definitely wanting to, to ride this curve. And doing so, uh, we need to cast a uh, broad net. Uh, we just opened up an office in Tokyo. Uh, we are very close to announcing a, a BV in Amsterdam. Uh, we do have a customer in uh, uh, Shenzhen, China. Uh, we have a second prospect uh, that we're working very closely with. I, I think we'll be able to announce a second a Chinese customer early next year. Um, 
And so the, these kind of data intensive, large uh, data set based computing applications are being done around the world. And so uh, as we started to have success in, in the US, uh, we started getting attention from prospects around the world and uh, are starting to spread our wings a bit uh, around, uh, to take advantage of that. Um, we've been very close to Dell. Uh, we are a vendor independent solution. Uh, you can run any kind of thin client uh, server on one side, any kind of JBOD on the other side, or uh, these new NVMe boxes on the other side. Uh, but Dell saw that they had a hole in their product line uh, that we solved, that they are a particularly successful vendor into this big data set space. Uh, when people want to buy you know, 500 servers to run Hadoop or 150 servers to, to run um, uh, uh, Cassandra, uh, Dell often gets the nod, and so we partnered up with them. Uh, we are now a tier one enterprise uh, infrastructure partner. Uh, means that the Dell sales reps can take orders for drive scale equipment, drive scale software. Uh, they actually get paid commission uh, by selling drive scale equipment. Uh, this is a, a, a huge validation for us and our, our technology. Um, we will move probably five or six million dollars uh, through the Dell price list this year. Um, and uh, uh, that was on the tier two price list. So they saw that kind of ramp up from zero to five million and said, okay, let's, let's put these guys on the tier one price list. Uh, there are only 40 companies on, on the tier one price list. DriveScale is by far the smallest company that uh, uh, is in this category. Uh, we're going around the world training up all the TSRs, technical sales reps who do the kind of architecture for, for Dell. Um, it's a big group, so this is a big bite for us to, to, uh, to chew on, uh, but it's, uh, uh, there's lots and lots of opportunity here uh, working together with Dell. Uh, we also have very good relations with uh, Cisco and with uh, Lenovo, so we're not uh, being exclusive Dell, uh, but Dell has been particularly successful in this space, and this is uh, really great for both of us. Um, we announced a new product this year. Uh, uh, Tom talked a lot about Flash. Uh, we were waiting for the 25, 50, 100 gig uh, fabric to become uh, uh, readily available and inexpensive. Uh, what we do with disk drives could be done very nicely with 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, for Flash, we need 25, 50, 100. Uh, to attach a flash drive to a server and have it perform equivalently to, to direct attached. Uh, we uh, worked with Foxconn to uh, design our own uh, adapter uh, hardware uh, for this space. Uh, we were thinking that uh, this idea of NV, NV, NVMe over fabrics was going to happen, but in 20, uh, we are in 2018, aren't we? 2018, probably, uh, there wasn't going to be hardware that, that really implemented it yet, so we wanted to get the, the market kick-started. So we, we, we were getting ready to announce this uh, 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 NVMe over Fabrics adapter when we found out from WD that they actually had built a very similar box. Uh, whew, i got to catch up with my breath. Uh, <laughs> called the Ultrastar 24HA. And so we were just delighted that the market was actually going to produce this kind of NVMe over fabrics uh, storage system. And so we, we delayed our announcement, uh, ported our software to the WD box, and announced both of them at the same time. Uh, looking out and talking to a lot of the other vendors, we we're going to see this kind of uh, NVMe box uh, being announced by a number of new vendors. And soon, uh, we hope that we'll be out of the hardware business entirely. Uh, the same thing is happening on the disk side. We're seeing uh, 84 drive uh, storage, storage systems with two single uh, socket uh, controllers. We can put our adapter software on that hardware, and that, that way we don't have to sell uh, our um, uh, uh, disk drive uh, SAS to Ethernet adapter anymore either. So uh, even though what we really do is hardware plumbing, uh, we do it with software, and uh, soon I think we'll be out of the, uh, the hardware business. The trouble with the Apple Watch is that people call you. <laughs> um, 
An example of the disk drive box is the Cisco uh, S3260. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's, how many drives is it? 56, 56 drives. 50, thank you. 56 drives, uh, two x86 controllers. We took our adapter software, put it on the x86 controllers. And so we can attach drives out of that box to other Cisco servers uh, with no drive scale hardware uh, in the middle. Um, target application areas. Uh, we started with Hadoop. Uh, Hadoop was our initial target. Um, and uh, we spent a lot of time with Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR. Uh, and our first Im implementations and first customers are all running Hadoop and, and Hadoop family products like, uh, like Kafka and Spark. Uh, with the announcement of the Flash product, we are uh, working hard with the uh, NoSQL uh, ISVs. Uh, we're very close with Aerospike and Couchbase. Uh, we're working closely also with um, uh, Datastax, with Cassandra, uh, and uh, the other ones will be following along. Um, our number one customer, I'll talk about in a while, uh, is using uh, Hadoop for uh, indexing their data set, and they're using Aerospike for doing their online transaction uh, platform. Uh, we want to be his solution for, for both sides of his business. Uh, containers is really the future. Uh, we, we see this is where things are going to go. Uh, we're doing a lot of work with Red Hat and OpenShift, uh, also uh, as you can see, we have a very aggressive uh, ecosystem development uh, uh, outreach uh, with our company. Uh, we're, we're, we're building the compute platform underneath uh, where these applications run, and we need to make sure that the people running those applications or developing those applications are happy with the platform that we provide. MPP databases are more old school. Um, it, it was kind of, it, they predated Hadoop. Uh, but they, they have a lot of uh, uh, users for Greenplum, Vertica, uh, and uh, we can run under, underneath them as well. Um, we are just using the protocols that have gotten established, as Tom was talking about. Uh, the components have become commoditized. The protocols have become standard. So we can stitch these components together with our, with our orchestration software. And it doesn't matter where the components came from. Uh, so we really are vendor independent, uh, building up these uh, compute systems uh, out of standard parts. Gene, can I? Yeah. Something I'm trying to sink in my brain here. So I think of you as dealing as the, the software front end for distributed storage. But you keep saying compute infrastructure. I'm looking at all the alignments you had on that NASCAR slide back there. What it feels like is you, you've moved into, sure, maybe storage was a primary composable infrastructure need, but it's now extended beyond that? Well, so what we've always done is disaggregating the server into compute and storage components and then stitch them back together with our orchestration software. So you end up with a cluster of Linux boxes that look like a bunch of servers, but now the servers can be modified in, in how, what they contain anytime you like. So it's always been a, a, a compute platform orchestration that includes storage and compute. Uh, what's getting disaggregated from this uh, compute is the storage, in fact. And so we do a lot of storagey things. But when we get done, you end up with uh, you know, three, 300 uh, Linux nodes that we constructed for you that you can then load your Cassandra uh, workload on top of. Hmm. Does, that make, does, that, does that make more sense? Actually, we're going to go through the, the, the nuts and bolts of how the product works in the next presentation. Uh, maybe we can talk some more about that. Yeah. Uh, so for uh, the hyperscale guys, um, they just you know th bring in 10 more racks and hook everything up and they can adjust their uh, environment as, as they grow. But for an enterprise that's got 800 nodes, uh, it's expensive to bring in another 100 nodes to readjust because they under-provision one thing and over-provision another. Uh, and so capacity planning is just a huge thing for these sort of moderate size, enterprise scale, uh, big data applications. Uh, and they over, always over-provision. Uh, since you can't change what's in the server box that makes up these clusters for three years until you replace it, uh, you want to make sure you're not going to run out of, of capacity. And so uh, 
you basically do your capacity planning uh, once every three years and typically over provision. With us, you can always buy another JBOD, spread a bunch more disks across your cluster, uh, or upgrade all your CPUs while keep your disks. Uh, so capacity planning becomes much more real time and adjusting as you go. Um, if you bought a pools of resources with us, you can basically put in your requirements for a cluster, push a button, and we'll go construct the cluster for you out of the components. Uh, so, and then you can you know, put it away and do a different one. Uh, so your, your data center for these large uh, applications start to look like how cloud operates. Uh, so you can spin things up, spin them down, uh, apply different applications to different data sets. Uh, and become much more responsive there. Um, one of the, um, uh, our first customer was using uh, 12 and 18 drive servers for everything. Uh, with us, they went through the analysis of what's the right uh, spindle to compute ratio for the different kind of applications they have, whether it's MapReduce or Kafka or uh, uh, they have a couple of other uh, applications. And instead of having 12 and 18 drive nodes, now they have uh, four, six, and seven drive nodes for those same applications, uh, buying a lot less storage because they know that, first of all, they can build the seven node cluster, which they couldn't out of standard part numbers before. And secondly, they know they can always go to eight if they need to later, uh, and it's a lot easier. So the, so the resources aren't captive to this cluster and you break down the silos uh, between the different applications. Um, basically, this enables these kind of uh, enterprise scale guys to get the kind of benefits from their data that the, the hyperscale f folks were getting. And uh, in the end, we save them a lot of money. I, our, our standard line is that we save you way more money than it costs to buy us, and so we're for free. Um, so I, I mentioned AppNexus a couple of times. AppNexus is the uh, large, was the largest independent uh, ad tech company outside of DoubleClick at Google until they got bought by AT&T. Uh, they're now part of AT&T's advertising division, which they just named Xander for Alexander, Graham Bell, I guess. Um, so they're, they're going to have a much broader charter now than they, than they had when they were just an independent company, which is good for us. Uh, they're the guys that used to buy 12 and 18 drive nodes for everything that are now uh, deploying uh, four, five, and uh, six, and seven drive nodes. Uh, basically reduce uh, their server configurations to one SKU, and then they have a JBOD SKU, and they can build everything out of those two SKUs, uh, where they used to have a number of, of uh, SKUs across the data center. Uh, we now have over 1,000 nodes uh, that have been orchestrated and put together uh, with our software at AppNexus, um, and uh, everything is running really well. Uh, ClearSense uh, is a startup, medical analytics startup. Uh, they take real-time uh, telemetry data from all the equipment hooked up to ICU patients. They have a data set of over 100,000 uh, ICU patient histories that they've analyzed, and then they uh, compare what's coming in from real live ICU patients to uh, what they learned out of their data set, and they do predictive analytics. So they can do things like telling the nurse that this patient is gonna have a heart attack in 20 minutes. You probably ought to talk to the doctor about administering this drug to head that off, those kinds of things. Uh, their clients are, are uh, hospitals. Uh, they got started in a large hospital chain to start with. They were an internal group. Uh, it worked so well, they got spun out to be a, a startup company. And of course, as most startup companies do, uh, they started with AWS. Um, what they found, though, was that they are real-time analytics. They run all the time. And they were running into the noisy neighbor problem because their Hadoop cluster was run on top of VMs. And the performance was variable, uh, unacceptably variable. Uh, so they went to uh, dedicated instances where they would rent the entire machine from, from AWS. Uh, their performance went up dramatically, but also their costs went up uh, dramatically as well. 
uh, they decided instead of buying uh, their servers every four months, they could just buy them every three years instead. Uh, and they built a, a data center in Ecolo with us, uh, got 18 times more storage, 11 times more cores at, at the, about the same cost per, per month as they were spending at AWS. Uh, and, but now they had lots of headroom for growth uh, and their, their rates weren't gonna, going to go up. And by using us, they recovered the uh, flexibility they had when they were running on VMs that they lost when they went to dedicated instances. So they're delighted with us and delighted with the economics that they've uh, gained by coming off of the, of the cloud and building their own data center. Uh, our Chinese customer is the FedEx of China. Uh, SF Express is their name. It's a fascinating company. Uh, it was founded by this bicycle delivery boy uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, and he uh, uh, started buying more bicycles and hiring his friends to deliver. And you know, within 10 years, he was buying airplanes and doing package delivery all, all over China. Uh, they are massive. They're actually bigger than FedEx. Um, the CTO of uh, SF Express is a Chinese native, but he worked 20 years at UPS. I'm sorry. Yeah, United Parcel Service. Uh, and then returned to China to work for SF Express about five years ago. He saw what we were doing and said, this is, this is what we should be doing. I want to be your first Chinese customer. And he became our first Chinese customer. Uh, the first application is their disaster recovery site. Uh, they can put in a cluster with drive scale that can be manipulated to look like any one of their other sites uh, running different kinds of applications within a couple of hours. Uh, they, they, they back up the data sets, they can load those data sets into the drive scale cluster, configure it appropriately to be running whatever uh, data center went down uh, within a couple of hours, and they can bring it back, bring it back up and, and uh, replicate what was being done there before. Uh, this sa saved them an enormous amount of hardware, otherwise they'd be triplicating uh, their other data centers. Uh, they do plan, at, you know, to do this we have to be able to run all the stuff. So they do plan to start using us for their expansion in their regular production sites as well. Um, we are 100% reseller. Uh, we don't sell the whole solution. We're just a piece of, we're the orchestration piece. You still have to buy all this other hardware to build your platform. Uh, so uh, we work with VARS to put the whole solution together for our customers. Uh, and overseas, uh, we're going through uh, master distributors as well. And of course, we put Dell as a partner, reseller partner here in that the Dell sales uh, organization uh, can take orders for drive scale equipment from their customers and, and drive scale product. Um, the, um, I want to talk about the team. I think we have a highly unusual amount of experience in this company. You saw a little bit of that with Tom. Uh, so I want to talk about where we all came from. That's why I have Sun up here on the, on the board. That's, that's where a number of us came from. We have about 30 people in the company. Uh, 19 of us used to work at Sun. Uh, so a lot of the Sun uh, uh, approach to things works its way into the, the way our culture works as well. Uh, you, you, Tom was uh, employee number eight at Sun. Uh, he jokes he had three years of experience when he joined Sun, and that was way more than the founders. Uh, so he was the experienced hire. Uh, he wrote much of the networking stack for Sun OS, uh, worked on NFS, uh, worked on Spark, uh, and some other things. Um, Satya is our other founder. Uh, he worked with Andy Bechtelsheim on the Spark Station 1 that got announced in 1989. And then he became the chief architect for the workstation business unit at Sun. Uh, did eight generations of UltraSpark workstation designs uh, over the next 12 years. Uh, I was at Sun uh, for 15 years. Um, I was the president of Sun Japan for five years, uh, so I know something about the Asian business. Uh, when I came back to corporate, I became the VPGM of the workstation business unit, and so Satya was my, uh, my chief architect. So that's, that's how, how I got connected with this company. Although I didn't know Tom, I knew, knew Satya a lot better. Uh, Tom left Sun uh, and founded a company called Ypsilon. He had an idea of how to do IP switching and founded Ypsilon to go uh, do that idea. The button. Got, oh, bought, that is got bought by uh, Nokia. Yeah, he talked quite a bit about having been at Nokia. 
uh, because they bought Ypsilon. Uh, he likes the joke that uh, they gave Cisco a lot of headaches for three or four years. Um, and, uh, but then he decided to uh, join Cisco. So Tom and Satya became the early employees. Tom is actually employee number one at a Cisco spin-in called uh, Nuova Systems. Uh, and they built an integrated uh, blade server chassis with embedded networking, uh, Tom being the networking guy and Satya being the system guy. Uh, and before they could even announce their product, they were bought by Cisco uh, and were brought in to be the core of the Cisco UCS uh, product line. Uh, and then Satya went on to be the architect for Cisco UCS for eight years and did five generations of Cisco UCS designs. Um, Satya had the idea of disaggregating compute from storage and doing composability uh, with those components. And so they founded the company in 2013. And they're two founders. Uh, I left Sun in 2000. Um, I went to, to a application firewall company called uh, Net Continuum. Uh, we were the first company to do application layer firewall work where we would terminate TCP, look at the traffic going both ways, and, and identify hacking activity and, and block that traffic. Uh, the technology was sold to Barracuda Networks, and uh, the application layer firewall uh, technology at Barracuda uh, was founded from Net Continuum. Uh, I got bit by the green tech enthusiasm of uh, the early 2000s and was the founding CEO of Zero Motorcycles in Scotts Valley. Uh, they are doing extremely well. I just came, uh, I was at uh, their board meeting yesterday. Uh, they are by far the leading electric motorcycle company in the world. But the founders, I'm sorry, the, the investors in Zero figured out after a few years that a computer guy running a consumer products company probably wasn't the best fit. So we went out and found a really, really good consumer uh, flavored uh, CEO. And that's right about the time Satya called me and I joined DriveScale in uh, 2014. So the point of all this is that uh, this kind of enterprise uh, IT infrastructure orchestration stuff is uh, uh, the business of selling inter enterprise IT is difficult. Uh, you have to uh, embed uh, security from the start. You have to embed HA from the start. You have to know how this kind of stuff gets put together and the kinds of things that IT executives are looking for. Uh, we've been around the industry, as Tom said, for 40 years. Uh, we've been through the ropes on this stuff, so we know how to, how to build these kind of products. The basic idea of using iSCSI to connect a disk drive to a server is not difficult, but orchestrating uh, thousands of drives or tens of thousands of drives to thousands of servers in an IT environment is very difficult, and it takes a team with this kind of background to, uh, to do that kind of stuff. Um, Recently, uh, Brian Pulowski uh, saw what we were doing. Uh, he was the uh, 22 years at, at uh, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, AppNexus. NetApp. NetApp. <laughs> AppNexus. Um, and he liked what he saw us doing here. Um, uh, and uh, 22 years at NetApp, uh, three years at uh, Pure Storage as chief architect and he recently joined us as our CTO. And, and my other speech was supposed to come after I introduced him, so just, just reverse that in your mind. <laughs> but getting Brian is, uh, was really a great ad. Uh, so now we have a networking guy, and a systems guy, and a storage guy coming together and, and helping make that, build this company. And uh, we've been able to attract other really senior uh, capable executives to flesh out the team. Uh, Boy, I would take this team and run uh, you know, a billion dollar company any day. Uh, these people have done that kind of stuff before. Uh, we have great investors. Um, we have some really nice uh, advisors, including Scott McNeely and Whit Diffie, uh, Herb Kunick, who used to be the president of Hortonworks, uh, Amara Dwala, who's the CTO co-founder at Cloudera, was our very first investor. He put $50,000 into the company uh, at, right after Tom and Satya uh, talked to Cloudera when they founded the company. Really uh, a strong set of people. Um, tai Yu Chao, mm. on our board, he's the CTO of the uh, $60 billion a year um, uh, infrastructure division at Foxconn, who makes all the uh, hardware for Dell and Cisco and NetApp. 
uh, and uh, he's helping us out as well.